This is difficult for me, but I wanted to make sure it was documented. She's at the hospital and she's fading fast. While I was on the phone with Ronnie, she passed away. So grandma's moved on from this life into the next life. Hmm. In heaven. <laughs> So, <laughs> last night my parents had me go to bed at like 9 o'clock <laughs> thinking that would help. It didn't help with my coughing and stuff like that. In fact, I think it's worse than it was yesterday. I haven't heard you cough. You haven't? No. Maybe it's all in your head, yo. It's not. Plus, I don't really cough as much in the morning as I do later on in the day. But I have been coughing. You can ask Allie. It feels worse. Maybe if I keep going to bed early though. Yeah. For like six months. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. That was terrible. I hate going to bed early. That was terrible. It legit felt like four different nights. I woke up a ton, probably because of the medicine. I'm vlogging. Seriously, stop. I need to help. <laughs> That's not gonna help. I'm trying to. My video is gonna be awesome. Make sure you go watch it on the day on Brands and Denrights. Oh, hey, I need your help. Let's I'm go. busy. What in the world is going on here? It doesn't matter. Whoa. My coronavirus made me so you also fall up the stairs. I did is not. I did not all the time. No, I do the whole <laughs> <laughs> Day one of spring break has consisted of time on the iPad, filling an office with bounce house balls, making blueberry muffins, and falling up the stairs. It sounds like it's been pretty productive. What do you think? Are you finding new ways to entertain yourselves during this quarantine? Are you just like sitting and playing on your phone the whole time? Are you finding things to do, like maybe finding new exercise routines? Are you going out for walks? Are you playing in your backyard? Are you playing new games? Are you teasing your siblings? What kind of things are you doing to keep yourself entertained during quarantine? Thank you for calling Intex. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Intex has chosen to minimize the workforce in order to ensure the safety and welfare of our employees. The call center will be temporarily closed until further notice. The office is closed until further notice. Guys, I came out here check on this pump um, and check on the pool to see how we're doing in terms of temperature. The pump is not working. It's not turning on and my pool is sitting here not getting circulated and this pipe right here is starting to look green and I hope it's not because it's getting algae in it. I can't afford to have this whole entire pool go green and grow algae because then I've got to drain the entire system. But with COVID-19 the office is closed. How am I supposed to get this back up and running? I hate to do this. I might have to actually take these screws out, check to see if there's something internal that's wrong, but this is only two days old, like maybe four days old. Maybe I just might have to get inside of there and just run around and mix it myself. I don't know. Dude, that's not good. Not good at all. Probably gonna clean this mess up, yo. Put it through the window. Okay, Branson just played a very mean, nasty trick on me on his channel. Yeah, as you can see, this is what's happening. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired because it's it's very difficult getting out of a whole room filled full of pit balls. You know, were you in on this? I can either confirm or deny. <laughs> These punks. Branson just played a mean, nasty prank on me. And now I can't even get in my office. And I missed a very important conference call. And Mara got hurt. Look what he did to me. He tried to kill me in there. <laughs> That's serious business right there. Let's see. I haven't like clipped what my nails that? and everything. It's a nail. She was teasing me. Yeah, she was said, I'm just kidding. I was trying to get a ball down her shirt. By the way, I'm wearing shorts and it's cold. The balls are really cold up against my legs. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have, have to check out Branson's channel to see the video. You may have already seen it, guys. Whoa. We, have you seen that TikTok where the guy's laying down and they stand up and the girl's on his back and she ends up on his shoulders? <laughs> we tried that and that's as far as we got. <laughs> I 
can play really good off of camera, but then as soon as I turn the camera, <coughs> as soon as I turn the camera on, I can't. I can't play. I'm camera. sorry. Okay. I'm already you can only play with one camera. You can't no, play I with can't two cameras even. rolling. I can't. All I'm right. trying. You were doing great. This is difficult for me, but I wanted to make sure it was documented because memories should be uh, cherished. They should be documented. I should be able to have them forever. It's gonna be difficult for me to say, but I just got a phone call from my cousin who I've gotten to be pretty close with over the last three or four or five months. Um, she asked me to bless her baby, which was a sweet experience. Anyway, she just called me and said, hey, I wanted to let you know that that mom, grandma, she calls her mom because she was adopted by my grandma. My grandma and grandpa adopted her when she was younger. She wanted to let you know that the grandma's not gonna make it, that she's at the hospital and she's fading fast. And my grandma's older. She's surprisingly lasted a lot longer than even she thought she would. Her health has been declining for a long, long time, and over the past few months, she's been getting worse and worse. And and with this whole coronavirus scare, she's done everything she can to keep people out of her house. And we haven't been able to visit her over the last month because of that. And she ended up in the hospital last week, and. It's the place that she absolutely hates more than anything else in the world. She hates being in the hospital. She didn't want to be in the hospital. So I can imagine how miserable she was in there. She's still alive right now. I called all of my siblings and let them know so they could get over there. Unfortunately, I'm about three and a half to four hours away. And I'm not going to make it in time. So I'm not going to even attempt to do that because I would putting, be putting other people, in, including my family, at risk of the the virus by traveling. So I've made the decision not to go and try to make it in time. Mainly because I believe the last time I talked with her I felt really good about how much I let her know I loved her and appreciated her and we had a good chat. And I think she knows how much we care about her. Sarah and I had a phone call with her about two weeks ago. She sounded horrible and I, I remember hanging up the phone and telling Sarah She's really, really sick and, and doesn't sound like she's getting any better. But I didn't expect her to end up in the hospital. Anyway, I, I won't give the details, but she had to ride in the ambulance to get to the hospital. And that was probably hard because she could only have one person ride with her at that time. And not having family being able to visit her as much as she would have loved to was probably difficult. But as of right now, it's, it's a waiting game, waiting for that phone call. I still haven't even let the kids know. I let Sarah know. I haven't told the kids yet. I feel at peace. You know, when someone's been suffering for so long and their life is just, the quality of life is just not that great. Physically, they're deteriorating day by day. It's hard to be selfish and think, man, they just need to keep living for me so I don't, I'm not sad. So if I'm not selfish, I'm, I'm at peace. And I'm excited for her. She's been without her husband for 20 years, and now she gets to go see him. And her son, that she lost when he was 16 years old, 40, over 40 years ago, and all of her siblings and her parents. I guess I'll go tell the kids. So, Ronnie, Uncle Ronnie called me tonight <coughs> at 9.21, and he wanted to let me know that he was at the hospital with grandma and grandpa was there and a bunch of family members were there at the hospital that could be there and he said that her heart rate was getting really low and they were just waiting well I should say that the family had made the decision that they were going to take her off the ventilator so the ventilator is the thing that they put on you to help you breathe because your lungs aren't doing what they're supposed to do anymore so that you're blood can still have oxygen, so you can get oxygen to your brain. Well, she kept getting worse and worse and worse throughout the day and the night, and they made the decision to take her off the ventilator. Well, Heather had to run to take 
her baby to the babysitter, and so they were waiting for her to get back. But while I was on the phone with Ronnie, she passed away. So Grandma's moved on from this life into the next life. In heaven. And so it was incredible, number one, that, that Ronnie called me. Incredible to be able to sit there with Mommy. And we had a moment of about 15 minutes where I felt this incredible peace. Just a very peaceful feeling where there was no fear, there was no doubt, there was no pain, there was no regret. There was none of those feelings. I couldn't, I literally could not feel any of those feelings. All it was was peace. And so what I felt was this incredible, like love. Peace is love. It just is this incredible thing that, that I felt. And, and I, I don't know if you feel it right now. You might have be having other feelings, but I, I, f I know that Grandma, you know, physically, when we're together, we have to physically be together, right? Mm -hmm. But spiritually, we don't have to be in the same place. And so I felt Grandma's spirit. I felt that peace. <laughs> and I know that she's now, I kind of felt the happiness that she, you know, she lost my uncle when he was 16, that was 42 years ago. She hasn't seen him for 42 years. And she lost her husband, my grandpa, her great grandpa, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. She misses him. She says it every time we see her. And I had a few messages from her and um, I still have them. And the, the first message she left me was the reason why we started going and seeing her more often. And that was on 1010 which is in October. From that point forward, we got to see her more from that time until just recently than we had seen her in the last 10 years. So I feel like we had such a great opportunity because of that to be able to see her more before she passed away. You remember going and seeing Grandma recently? <coughs> yep. Can you hear her saying, love ya? Can you hear her saying that? Love you, hon. Love you, hon. <laughs> I can hear it. I can hear her saying it. I can hear her saying it. And we got to tell her how much we loved her too, right? Give her hugs. And... Yep. So if you want to talk about it, we can totally talk about it, or we can just think about it. But just make sure she's in your prayers tonight. Know that there's family members that are really hurting right now. Really pray hurting. Pray for their comfort. Billy, Billy needs your prayers. There's stuff that. Billy's going to be going through for a while that's really going to be difficult because grandma was his purpose and he has to figure out a new purpose in life now. That's very difficult. He did incredible things for grandma. He literally lost himself for grandma. He took care of her every need and completely gave up everything that he could have in life. Everything. Her own son took care of her that, that well. I can only hope that I could care about someone that much in life. So make sure you pray for, for those people that need their hearts healed. <laughs> There's lots of teeth that need brushed in this room. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Daddy, can you give me milkies? Oh, you want milkies? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that. Um, I mean, here, and this is what I do every night. I tell them good night the first time, and then they run up and they go to bed. And then I come back and tell them the second time. Typically they're asleep like this Majikino is right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes they don't remember it, but it's a routine that we have, huh? Mm -hmm. Just want to just let you guys know that, and let myself know, and just like a little reminder that, um, that death is just a part of life. If you have life, you have death. And the other part of that is that we never know when we're going to go. We just have no clue. And that's one of the great mysteries of life is to not know when it is over for you or for someone else. And I think one of the things that we take for granted is, is the mystery of that, is to know each day that we just don't know how much longer we have. And while life seems so difficult at times, death seems even more difficult to understand. And when we have this life to live, we're only given this one life, and so we should really do our everything to live it the best possible way we possibly can. And so, 
just death is always a reminder to me that life is so good and once again as difficult as it is it brings me peace to know that my grandpa gets to see my grandma again it's been 20 years 22 years since he's it's 21 years since he's been able to see her and there's so much as much as much sorrow is happening here on this side when someone passes there's so much celebration happening on the other side and that can too bring us so much peace and I still just have so much peace right now I, it's it's such a calming feeling and I believe it's because of my faith knowing that this life is not just the end when we're done there's so much more and I think we get little glimpses of it throughout our life and death is one of those glimpses when we when someone else passes we just get that little small glimpse that, that we're holding on to and knowing that they're still here with us in spirit and their body is given up we love you guys we're grateful for you we're so thankful for so much that you give us in validation and in your love and your support for us and uh, we just hope you that you never forget and it's it's really our mission it's really our our goal is to help you understand and uh, also give you something to pass on to others of your value of your value that never changes no matter what you do wrong and no matter of the small mistakes that you make in life your value never ever changes and so never forget that you are, you worth, are it. worth it good night guys good night